Whoa. It's kind of like when you look in the mirror, like if you have a mirror on either side of you in the bathroom or something, and you look in there, it's like, I go on for eternity. Hey, what's up guys? Jace Two Cents bringing you another one of these Adobe videos here where it's kind of like the noob helping the noob, if you will. I mean, I've been editing videos for a long time, obviously now on YouTube, but that doesn't make me an expert but it does give me some knowledge that I can share with you guys to help you have a little bit easier time with editing your videos and rendering them and getting the best quality that you can if you're using the Adobe uh, you know, Premiere, Premiere Pro or CC like I'm using here. And I'm today gonna focus on what all those damn settings mean in the rendering box and the export functions that just confuse the hell out of you and you don't know what to click and you, are you you're just so confused. Anyway, we're gonna go over those settings today and we're gonna make it really easy for you to get the best quality renders without using up all your CPU or all of your valuable time. Now these how-to segments here with video editing and creator topics is brought to you by Videoblocks and it's a service that I've actually been using for three years now and you guys have seen it subtly in some of my videos, adding a, just a little bit of pop and a little bit of flair uh, to what would otherwise be some pretty boring like benchmark numbers and transitions and things like that. So make sure you guys come and check out Video Blocks. They've got pretty much something for anyone. Right now they've got a lot of holiday stuff going on, a lot of holiday motion backgrounds. You can see we got some snow falling here. I don't know what that's like. I live in California. I have no idea what snow falls like. So I'm going to take their word for it that this is pretty accurate. But you've got motion backgrounds and all kinds of stuff that you can use. Transitions, stock footage here. Maybe you want to make, you know, a shoe commercial or something. I don't know. That's the point. Anything you want to do, you can pretty much find here in their $10 million worth of stock footage. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Now, right now, uh, there's a special promo going on at the time of making this video, and you can find the link to it down in the description where you can save 50% off of your year-long membership, which is normally 99 bucks. But right now, using my link down in the description, you can get a year-long membership with an unlimited use of their $10 million worth of library for only $49. Check them out. Use the link down in the description. They'll know that I sent you, and you will get 50% off your year-long membership. Trust me, that's that. I can't even tell you how much money that's worth. I mean, 49 bucks. Jeez, that's that's only like 10 Starbucks. I don't know. Go do it right now. Jeez, do yourself a favor. All right. So as I mentioned, the video topic for today is all the render settings in that render box. A lot of times, people spend a lot of time creating very good content. Lots of graphical overlays and transitions and color corrections and stuff, but they just don't know the best settings for rendering. They don't know the best export settings. They complain that it takes too long or it, it the file size is way too big because really a lot of people spend a, tend to spend a lot of time researching how to edit an amazing video, but no time on how to export it properly. So that's what we're gonna do today. Now, this is, as you guys have probably already seen, my video here where I was putting the block on my new motherboard that's going into Skunk Works. And right about here, as you can see, I'm inspecting the holes, realized, crap, I got the wrong freaking block. If you guys haven't seen that video in an epic J fail, there's plenty of those J fails, but this specific one, go and check that out. The video went up last Friday. But anyway, if you go over here to file, now this is also going to be Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2014. I have not upgraded to 2015. I've heard it had some issues and then this is working for me and I want to leave it here. So anyway, uh, this your, your menu may vary slightly depending on the edition of Pro that or Adobe Premiere that you are using, but this is going to be very similar for Elements uh, and even the Sony settings are very similar. They may not be worded identical, but they're very similar in the way that they work in terms of the types of settings that you can select. So let's say we're done with our file here. We're going to export this. We're going to click media, or you could do the shortcut of control M. I use a lot of shortcut keys because I like to keep things quick. Uh, here it is right here. Now we'll just go from right, uh, right down the list right here. So export settings. If you click match sequence settings, you'll see by default, it wants to export to a dot MP4 because we've got the H.264 encoder going here. By the way, this is the only encoder in the list that I use is H.264. But notice if we click match sequence settings, it changes it to an MPEG. The reason for that is the main track or the video track one on this project is coming out of my DSLR, which records in an MPEG format. Now we don't want MPEG because MPEG makes huge file formats at a not uh, exactly the greatest quality of encoders. So anyway, we are gonna switch that back to H.264. 
Now preset match source high bitrate. The reason why I kind of leave this one going rather than uh, coming down here and selecting, you know, like let's say, because you know down here they've got the YouTube one, right? I think, can you push, what? yes, okay. So we got some YouTube pre-rendered stuff here, right? YouTube 1080p HD. Now, wa now watch this. See how this file size here is set to 1246 megabyte? If I click that, do you see how that went up to 1970 megabytes? The reason for that is if you look here in the video settings, it brought the actual bit rate up to 16 by 16 VBR one pass, variable bit rate. Now I like to kind of take control over these settings and you're just gonna have to take my word for this one or try it out for yourself. I have spent a lot of time checking between the different bit rates all the way up to 50 Mbps to see what the difference is on the file output but once it's rendered up to YouTube. Now here's the thing, no matter what size you render the file at, YouTube is going to compress the absolute crap out of it. I think you guys have seen that. And the end result of their compressed file is much smaller than 16. So if we left the target bit rate and the max bit rate at 16, which is kind of funny because the bit rate encoding here is VBR, technically would be CBR or constant bit rate, if we don't allow it to have any variation here, it's gonna be much, much smaller than that because YouTube has millions and millions and what, probably billions of videos online now, and they don't want to use up all of their server space, so they compress it as small as possible. The point I wanted to make out here was the moment I change anything down here, it's gonna switch the preset to custom anyway. So if you just wanna click it and forget it, you can be on your way, that's fine. Uh, but I don't like to use the pre-rendered or pre-selections here. I the presets, I, I don't like to do that. Now the output name, that's obviously up to you. You have to name that yourself. Here are some files here for my 970 hybrid. Uh, we could call this here rendering vidya. Actually, I spelled that wrong, vidya. There we go. Rendering vidya, save. So now you can see the file name would be called render vid rendering vidya in whatever folder we set that to. Pretty self-explanatory. Export audio, export video. Well, if we turn both of those off, it's like at least one has to be selected, you doofus. You need something to export. Okay, fine. Now, on the selections here in the tabs, on the left-hand side, you can do a couple of things, which is kind of neat. You can add some basic applied effects here, like we can make it a black and white, or we can compress the audio or the video day for night. So we can make something, like if we shot this outside during the day, we apply this filter, it kind of makes it look like it's at night. Sipia, like old Wild West bleach bypass. So instead of having to apply these to all your clips in your video, which or in your timeline, which would be very intensive, you could apply them here at the time of rendering, and then everything will, it'll just happen all at once. Uh, warm overall, which is nice if you accidentally have a video where you had your white balance way off, instead of having to apply it to each one of your clips, you could just apply it overall, et cetera, et cetera. You can turn that off. Image overlay is very neat. Let's say you want to watermark it. Let's say you've got like a little JC Sense logo or something that you want to put on the video and not have to apply it as an overlay inside of your timeline and I'll have to take up a whole track with that. You could click this here. You can find your file. So we'll go here to my design element stuff, which is where I keep a lot of my stuff. My Twitch background. And let's say I want to put this, um, so I'll put this J's Two Cents logo in there. Bam. We don't want that in the middle of the screen. I mean, unless we were gonna watermark it as like a client proof or something. So you can move it, the size of it here. You can make it bigger or smaller by clicking on the size and dragging. You can also move the thing with the offset here for position. Click and drag it left. See that? It goes left when you go left. That's weird, huh? Now right to go down on the other on the y-axis. And there we go. We technically have now a little bit of a watermark. Isn't that neat? That's neat. So instead of having to apply it in our timeline, we can just do it at the time of rendering. That's always neat. I don't really do that, but I should probably start considering my videos have been getting re-uploaded a lot. Um, name overlay, that's just if you want to name the file, you can, you can make it whatever you want, basically file output name, rendering video.mp4. So that'd be kind of like a client proof sort of thing. Um, uh, but I assume most of you would probably not be using any of that. This is the part here where most people are going to be interested in. This is the video format here or video tab here in the export settings. You can match the source. Um, which is awesome. It says right here automatically sets basic video settings to match sources pro properties. Um, eh, I mean, you could do that, but whatever. Render at maximum depth. This is the one that tends to really confuse people like, maximum depth? I want maximum depth. I want my video to look amazing. Well, guess what? I forgot to mute my phone again. Maximum depth here. This is only used if you were going to be rendering something with high 
bit, uh, like say something like 32 bit, and you're compressing it down. And what that basically means is that most cameras these days, guys, are not using anything higher than 8 bit. Um, even a camera that has 10 bit, like a DSLR or some sort of a, a professional video, video camera, is going to be like a 10 bit camera. 32 bit, we're talking like Sony Red Epic or something like that. And what's going to happen here is when you take that huge bit rate and you make it smaller, you start to get what's called banding. And you guys have all seen this, especially in like where there's a color gradient and you can see the definition where it went from like black to dark gray to medium gray to light gray to white. And it just got this like very sharp cutoff line. That is called banding. And that's going to happen if you don't click this setting. I don't think you need to worry about this. Most of us are not using any sort of equipment for recording that's gonna really make this matter. For the most part, leave that unchecked. It's just gonna slow down your render. I always leave this at VBR one pass. I've tried, uh, and VBR stands for variable bit rate, CBR is constant bit rate. I've tried one pass and two pass. I've not noticed much of a difference, but most of my videos are just talking head format anyway without fast motion and stuff. If you were doing like sports videography, uh, gaming and things like that, you might wanna make it a two pass and then you would wanna make the bit rate you know, fairly decent. Now by default guys, I do 14 uh, by 16 on my target bitrate. I let it go all the way down to 14. In fact, sometimes if I'm just a talking head, like let's just say I'm doing one of those videos where I'm sitting there telling you guys about you know what to look for in buying a motherboard or water cooling, I'm just literally sitting in front of the camera, I'll let that go all the way down to 10 because it's not gonna really matter considering nothing with the exception of my body is moving in the frame whatsoever. Keyframe distance, this isn't gonna really matter for your videos here, but down here, this is what is going to matter here. Use maximum render quality. A lot of people click that because the wording in itself makes you think, well, I want my video to look the absolute best. Therefore, I am going to click it. Bam. Well, what you just did was you, you did absolutely nothing. Use maximum render quality is what you use if you are changing the file output size from, from the source. So if we had recorded, let's say, 4K gameplay, and we were gonna output it to 1080p, then you would select it. What it's gonna do is it's going to make the resizing of the highest quality so that you can eliminate jaggies and fuzzies and things like that. Same thing with if you're going up, let's say you recorded 720p and you're trying to put it in a 1080p format and you wanna you know, bump up the size of the video, you know you're gonna get a lot of jaggies uh, because it's obviously not its native resolution. It can help a little bit, almost like anti-aliasing. So that's the only, the only time you're gonna use this is as I said, you are outputting to a different size than the source. And you can always tell right here in the summary of what's happening. Your source size is right here, 1920 by 1080, and our output size is right here, 1920 by 1080. So if those were different, then you would select the use maximum render quality. Use previews is something I use simply because I do preview my videos. And when you preview them, Adobe will create a preview file which has all of the effects and things that you have put in there pre-rendered if you watched it. If you didn't watch your, your video and you just went along and edited and at the end you just trusted everything was good and you hit you know export and you let it go, then it won't do anything because you have no preview files anywhere in your folder format for the project. So if you do watch your video and you proof it, and you can tell right here I've got this red line because I watch my video and this red line basically is the pre-rendered video file then you can click use previews and it will record and render much, much faster. Use frame blending. This is something you wanna use if you have a lot of choppiness inside of your video. Um, let's, uh, I'm trying to think of an example of where you'd have a really choppy video. Maybe, uh, maybe you're recording at 30 FPS and you've got a lot of camera movement and it looks kinda choppy as you're, as you're moving really, really fast. You know, motion blur doesn't really kick in in video cameras as much. Uh, especially with DSLRs. So let's say you have a lot of jerkiness in your video because it's very choppy, then you can click use frame blending and it will try and smooth that out. Um, import into project, that's not something I use. That's if you're using multiple Adobe stuffs. But you can see anything you do here that you make changes to is going to change the output file size. So our goal here is to get the best quality video you can for the smallest file size. And basically, I, like I said, I, I leave this to about anywhere between 10 or 14, depending on the video, and then I never let that go above 16. YouTube is gonna compress the shit out of it anyway. Obviously, if you're making stuff for you to watch on your own, you know, TVs and stuff and not necessarily YouTube, 
then you can make this as high quality as you want because then you'll be doing video playback and you won't be actually uploading it or streaming it or anything like that. But I hope this video has helped you guys. I know it was probably a little bit longer, but I wanted an in-depth explanation of what these settings are to help you get the absolute best uh, video quality that you possibly can. Make sure you guys also go check out Video Blocks. Don't forget 50% off right now at the time of this video. Link is in the description. Go and check it out. 49 bucks for a year. That is a stupidly smart value if you guys are looking for stock footage and templates and things like that. Anyway, time to get out of here, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.